Good morning. Here is a, a scripture reading that comes to us from uh, Psalm 9, verses 1 to 2. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. As we gather this morning, I don't know what's going on in your life, and you don't know what's going on in mine, and I'm sure we all have ups and downs, and even in our community of faith as we worship this morning, there might be people who might not be feeling well this morning, who might have been diagnosed with a particular disease, but we gather here in hope that we are children of a God who heals us and who has taken this, us this far in order to show us how wonderful this God is. And God is great and God's greatness is shown to us in many ways and through many people we see God's wonders. And this morning, we would like to welcome Sarah into our midst. And uh, because we welcome her back, actually, she promised us three years ago, on June 4th, 2017, that she would be back. What a joy it is for somebody to honor their promise even after three years. Can we also do the same? We thank God for Sarah. And we also thank God for Bob Danster, who is back into our midst this morning. And as you will see later, he's able to walk because Terry was able to help him how to walk again. So Terry has done a great job. We thank God and we praise God for the wonders of doctors, nurses, all the people who take care of us, people who even perform surgeries. And may God continue to use them so that we can all be healed. Now, on a funny note, I would like to share with you something that was sent to me in an email. A friend of mine sent me a lot of pictures from, uh, taken from a restaurant in Austin, Texas. 
So I would like to title this time COVID-19 humor to get us through. So here is the only sign that I'd like to share with you at this time. It says, I need to practice some social distancing from the fridge. <laughs> I think we all need to do that. May God help us to do just that this week and in the coming weeks. Let us sing, all sing to our God. We come in reverent awe before the Lord our God, for great is the Lord. We come to join in all creation in singing new songs to the Lord our God, for the sake of our very lives and for the sake of God's majesty and honor. And so we come thinking, thanking the Lord our God, who sang creation into existence. For lyrics that push us past our reason, for melodies that break open our gifts, for cadences that locate us home beyond all our safe places, for tones and tunes that open our lives beyond control and our futures beyond despair, for the good company of artists, poets, musicians, cantors, and instruments for all times and places that sing for us and with us. We come in reverent awe before the Lord our God, for great is the Lord. We come to bring our offerings of worship and praise to the Lord our God. And by our 
God of past, present, and future, hear us in your habitation, listen to us in your dwelling place. Whatever our age, or race, or homeland, or class, or gender, or intelligence, or ability, or creed, you have promised to show us love, to heal us when we are wounded, to protect us when we are vulnerable, to come to us when we are alone. We stand now in need of your steadfast love. Do not disappoint us. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, in whom we become your new creation, and with whom we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. This morning's reading is Psalm 96, verses 1 to 10b. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. <clears throat> sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him, all ye earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established it shall never be moved.
Here is another interesting statement found in Austin, Texas, which was found and the picture was taken from there. So I'll share with you another signage. It goes like this. My hands are consuming. Can you guess what is coming next? More alcohol these days than my mouth. Isn't that true? In this time of COVID-19, our hands are now drunk. You know, they are doing whatever they feel like they should do. But we thank God for the fact that we do have alcohol to protect us in this time. But God is the best alcohol we can ask for. So let us pray. God, we give you thanks for your music of love, your music of presence that sustains us and we come into this virtual space made sacred by your very presence and ours oh god because we are your children to worship and praise your name and as we reflect on your word all what we can ask for is the ability to be able not to just keep your word in our heart but to be able to share it with other people May we be the song that you have composed through your word. Now we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. This coming Sunday, we are going to start a six Sunday worship series. Not sermon series, but worship series. And these series are titled Hymnology. Next Sunday we'll talk about what hymnology is all about. Hymnology 101, singing through the pandemic. And during those worship series, we are going to be looking at the stories behind some of our favorite hymns, good old hymns. And when we listen to the stories, I think we are going to discover a treasure there. And by looking at those stories, our hope is to actually gain strength from those profound meanings that come from them. But before we move into our sermon series next week or uh, worship series next week, we thought it might be best for us to look at the word singing. What is it? We are not going to redefine it, but this morning we are going to be reflecting on singing from a position of heartfelt devotion. Singing from a position of heartfelt devotion devotion. And for us to be able to have a wonderful reflection, we are going to be focusing mainly on the two verses of chapter 96 of Psalm, which say, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth not just human beings, all creatures, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of God's salvation from day to day or day after day. This passage is filled with 
imperatives. Seeing, do this, it's as if we have left with no choice. We are told in this passage three times that we are to sing to God. We are left with no choice. Not just us, even animals, human and non-human creatures. Then as I was reflecting on this passage and working on today's reflection, which is, by the way, incomplete, it will be completed during our worship series. As I was working on this reflection, I said to myself, what's wrong with the writer of this passage, who is none other than David? What's wrong with it? Doesn't he know that some of us cannot even carry a tune? Some of us don't want to be embarrassed by just opening our mouth and even sing. What's wrong with him? Why should he give us those marching orders? So David, who is the composer of this passage, was a Jew. He belonged to a tradition that is the tradition of the Jewish people. He was a practicing Jewish gentleman. And he knew what Judaism was all about. And this is so important for us to remember, very important. According to Jewish tradition, God sang creation, not just human beings, the whole creation into existence. The Old Testament, was not written by Christians, we Christians. The Old Testament is really a Jewish scripture that we have inherited. So our story of the creation of the world according to Jewish tradition was same. And actually in one of the Jewish alternative meditations titled Singing Creation Into Being, written by rabbi or the singing rabbi Shlomo or Shalom, Karle Bach. And this uh, alternative meditation is found in a book titled Celebrating the Jewish Year that was published in 2007 by the Jewish Publication Society. And in this book, Rabbi Shalom has this to say, when God created the world, God said, let there be light, let there be fishes, let there be people. Then he asks, do you think when God was saying this, God spoke in a harsh voice? The truth is, God didn't even say it. God sang it. God sent the whole creation into being. So it's good and it's important for us to understand that this was David's tradition. And as he was writing this psalm, which is by the way a hymn, he had this in the background of his thought. Understanding, this understanding that God sent all of us into being. And because God, who is the performing artist, the master musician, and the audience of one, as I would like to call God, the audience of one to whom all praise is to be offered, sang the whole creation into being, music, Singing is an important part of who we as God creation are. We all have some singing DNA within us, whether you carry a tune or not. There is something in us that can cause us to sing the way only we, each and every one of us, can sing. I would like to share a story, and this is a story I heard about a young man who one day, he was 
a Christian. He went to a wonderful church where there was great music, great instrument, and all oh, people sing in harmony. But one day, he decided to go to visit a synagogue. And when he got there, most of the service was sang at that place. So this young man was expecting excellent singing when he got there. Right? He did not know what was coming his way. But when he was there, the congregants, the people who were in the building, in the sanctuary, in the synagogue, according to that man, were out of tune. This is a polite way of saying these people were awful. They were terrible. A very polite way of saying that. Now, as the service progressed and progressed, the singing, according to this young man, did not improve at all, but it just got worse. And it was at that time that he said to himself, if these people are here, they are not bored by this music and they are singing as if they know what they are doing. And I feel like they are not singing very well. I need to find out why it is that they have gathered here to sing the way they are singing. So it took his time to pay attention to what was going on. And it was at that time that he was able to realize that what was going on was not entertainment. And he realized that it was a celebration of something deep within the hearts and the souls of the people who had gathered in that synagogue. And on that day, that young man had a conversion because his understanding of what it meant to sing to God, what it meant to worship, expanded. And he learned that worshiping God, singing to God, is not a concert. It is not a show. But it is a time, an occasion when we express our devotion to that audience of one who is none other than our God, the creator, and the performing artist. Singing has more to do with our spirit than our pipes. May we remember that. So my brothers and sisters, David, through this song that he wrote, is encouraging us to sing because we all can sing the way God can allow us to sing. Whether we carry a tune or not, but singing is in each and every one of us. And we can sing from positions of heartfelt devotion. But here is a, something really interesting. We are told to sing a new song. Some will continue to say, I can't carry a tune. Yes, yes, sometimes I can sing in my heart. Yes, I can hum something. But should I compose a song now? What is David trying to say? What exactly is that new song? And what song are we given to even sing to God? This passage we read today doesn't tell us what exactly that new song is. But as I was reading some of the commentaries on this passage, I learned that this song could be this Psalm 96 we have read itself, or it could be a brand new composition for some of us who can compose song. It's okay to do that. 
It might also be a response to some event in the story of God's people, especially in the Bible, when the people of God were in exile or even, even freed and liberated from that exilic condition. Or it could be something that has happened and is, ha or is happening in our lives. Like we are going to learn next month and in early September, the people who wrote a number of our beloved hymns went through a lot of challenges. And when we listen to their stories, we cannot even believe that they could write such powerful hymns in times when they were going through their own pandemics. It could be something that has happened or is happening in our congregation, in our community, in our, in our families. Or it could be a song looking toward the future. Or one that combines the past, the present, and even the future. What song do we have? But as God's children, we have a wonderful heritage. And that heritage comes to us through people who have lived before us because sometimes the lyrics of hymns that have been written many years ago can bring and do actually bring new messages that give us strength, courage, perseverance, and hope in the midst of anything that we might be going through in our life. So my brothers and sisters, we may and definitely we will encounter familiar tunes, familiar songs or words that spark memories of God, goodness and faithfulness. And then when we listen to those words, we might also realize that something within us has been rekindled. And that something could be a flame of devotion to God and not to people around us who might be listening to what we are singing. But my prayer this morning is that more than memories of the past, May uh, these songs that we have inherited from great women and men who have served this God in this world before us become means for us to praise God and means through which God can lift our spirit through which God can give us strength in order for us to carry on through the shadow of pandemic that is actually looming over the world and any shadow that might be looming over our personal health or over our families or over our cities our provinces, and our nation. May God sing with and through us from positions of heartfelt devotion. Amen.
We offer our gifts and our lives to you, generous architect of the world, not because you need them, but so others might be as blessed as we are by your presence, your power, and your peace. Take, Take them, them and let, let them be songs, songs that, that we can reach out of our hearts as, as well as our hearts of others, so that together we can draw closer to you. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh God, many things have been going on in our world because there are so many worlds in this world. While some of us might be laughing at this time, there are some of us who are struggling and crying because of things that are going on in their lives. But we stand here and we lift up our eyes above all the troubles and we declare that we will exalt you. Not because everything is going to be perfect and rosy, but because you have done many great things in our lives. 
when we take the story of our congregation in particular, we keep saying, not just in our congregation, but all over the Western world, how we are left with many, many seniors in our congregation. And at times we feel like, yes, that is a bad thing. Yes, we don't have a lot of young people coming and worshiping with us as they used to do to do a long time ago. But let us see the positive in that. One look at the many years that these seniors have come to live on earth, oh God, may that be a source of our gratitude. Because for all these seniors to be able to live and be 70, 80, 90 years old, 95, 96, that is really a blessing. And for some of us who are young people and in families of those seniors and even communities of faith, may we look at them as a blessing. So this morning we stand in this place to just say, God, we are grateful for all seniors all over the world because they are working libraries. We can read books and all those things that we have there. At times books can contain misleading things. But these seniors that you have placed in our lives, they have stories that will never be found anywhere. And for seniors who might not be feeling well at this time, oh God, our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents, in our community of faith and even beyond, God, we leave them at the feet of Jesus Christ. And we just pray that you may continue to take care of them. And those who live in homes where they are alone and they might not be getting regular visit from loved ones, God, may you be the loved one that they always look up to and wait for because you are always with them. And we stand here with grateful heart, especially for shepherd's care, a place that was affected not long ago by COVID-19. People passed away, people were affected there, but by your grace, oh God, you have seen them through. We pray for all of them, all the residents, all the people who work there. May you continue to give them the strength they need to carry on. We know that there are many other pandemics in that place they need to deal with. They could be financial, they could be psychological, and in other areas, could be food and so on. We know that you'll continue to work with them. As long as there is life in you and with you, there's always hope for tomorrow. As we hear people talk about wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, oh God, there are other people that we live out of our conversations at times. And these are people who are hearing impaired, who are finding it difficult at times to listen and hear what we are saying when we put on our masks, oh God. We just pray that you may help us, whether we wear our masks or not, to always think about other people when we hold conversations about what affect us. Because we are all in the same boat. And all of us, in one way or another, we are impaired when it comes to hearing many things. And when we don't listen to other people, we have hearing impairment. May you heal us, oh God, so that we can sing healing songs with all people. And we join the World Council of Churches in praying for the Republic of Congo or Congo Brazzaville, Gabon, Sao Tome, and Princip. We are grateful, O oh God, for the minerals that you have endowed these nations, for the resources that you have given them. We are grateful for the animals and all creatures that are found in those countries. And our prayer is that you may help us and the inhabitants of those nations to protect nature. 
and help their leaders, oh God, to set an example for other people to follow. And by example, we pray for an example that flows from you. Last week, the week before last week, and even in the coming weeks, oh God, we might have hear and will hear that a person we know might have been diagnosed with an illness. Or a person we love, we know, might have undergone a surgery or will undergo a surgery. Or a person we know might have been admitted into a hospital or is now back home recovering. God, we just pray that we may be with all those people who are close to our heart. And for those who are hoping to go to a place where they will undergo a surgery, be the main doctor there, be the main surgeon and prepare them for that, oh God. And for those who are taking their medication as a result of something that just happened not long ago, be with them, oh God. And they might be asking themselves, can we sing a song? What song can we sing? Oh, only you, God, know what kind of song they can sing. We pray for them. And we pray for all of us. We pray for the whole world. And we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as we say together, Amen. May I invite you to join us as we sing, When in our music, God is glorified. Friends, as we go forth, let us be committed to joining with all creation in singing new songs 
to the Lord our God. And together we say, seeking not human favor, but divine approval. Let, and let us remember that it is not submission before God, but devotion to God, to which we are called in the name of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And together let us sing, sing Amen. Oh, God. 